Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Thank you so much to them for being part of what makes videos like this possible. We've previously covered two seasons worth of knitting and crocheting in Call the Midwife, and I think we all enjoyed it, so I thought that we would continue this series and do season three today. There are some classics that show up for the first time this season, I'm pretty sure, so I'm excited to go over them. I wanna talk about some of the vests that we see in this season first, specifically Fred's hand knit vest and Jacob's vests. So Fred's vest I think is really charming because from some of the details I think you can tell that it's hand knit and I don't know if it was done purposefully to kind of add to his character story and background and tell you a little bit about him without actually having to say anything but it's just a detail that sticks out to me and that is in the v-neck of his particular vest that center ribbing is a little offset and it's just it's such a charming little detail. I really enjoy those little snippets of real handwork that you can see in some of the knitting in these shows. His vest is a pretty plain vest with just a ribbed neckline and ribbed armholes. There are so many of those patterns available in the 50s, which is when this show, I think this season takes place. I think we started in 57, 58. Now I think we're in 1959. So there are a lot of patterns still available around this time that are plain classic men's vests and Fred's is a classic example with a little bit of added character and charm. The next set of vests though are a little bit more complex and that is Jacob's vests. He has two that he wears in a particular episode that really stuck out to me. The first one is like this burnt orange cabled one. Cabled vests are some of my favorites. I've brought it up in a previous episode review of Call the Midwife's Knits. I love cabled vests. I've made my own cabled knit vest. And so this one, I just, I really like it and it has a lot of complex character, but the one that's kind of stood out to me even more is this second one which I kind of have a hard time describing it. I, I want to say it almost has a plaid effect but what's interesting to me is that the vertical stripes are not so easy to do in knitting. So when you are doing color work knitting the horizontal stripes are easy right? You're working back and forth so you just switch out for one row the color of the yarn and then you have those horizontal stripes. If you want to do vertical stripes like that you have to do fair aisle. There's a few options I guess you don't have to. You could do fair aisle like I did for this particular sweater. Also, I sometimes get a lot of questions when I wear this sweater. Yes, I did knit this sweater myself from a vintage pattern. I will leave the links below for the pattern that I used and the yarn that I used in case you want to replicate it yourself. I love this sweater a lot and I'm glad that you guys enjoy it as well. But the technique I use for this is fair aisle. So you would carry the work across the back, like the yarn across the back of your work as you're going and it adds to the, it adds these strands in the back, which sometimes, especially when you have a lighter color as the main color work and then the accent color is darker, you can kind of see those strands, so that's not ideal to do in situations like this. The other thing is that you can do is intarsia. So you would have individual balls of yarn for every vertical stripe on that vest. Now I found a vintage knitting pattern that is really, really similar to this. It has two vests in a plaid pattern, and one of them uses the intarsia method like this, but the stripes in the vertical direction are a little more complex. It's not just an up and down, stripe it's got a little bit more detail to it so I think it makes sense that those are intarsia but what I think Jacob's vest is is that after you finish knitting it right so you knit it all with the horizontal stripe so it literally just looks like a horizontal striped vest you go in afterwards and you embroider on top the vertical stripes. I have, I found this pattern that does it this way. I have other patterns in my collection that do it that way. If you remember, I did a vintage Halloween sweater a while back that was a spider web on the neckline and the horizontal stripes you could just do easily. And then the vertical stripes of that spider web are embroidered on afterwards. I have a feeling though, I was taking, I was trying to like really zoom in on this video footage. I don't know that it's fully embroidered because I feel like it almost has like there's larger sections where the yarn comes in front of the knitting on Jacob's vest. And I really like that detail. It like adds extra texture. It'd be so interesting to know. I wish, I have been trying to look to see where did they source all of these knits from? Who did they contract or who worked with them to find these knitting patterns or find these knits or design these knits? Who knit them? Who made them? Now, speaking of watching all of these lovely shows, I'm located in the United States and it is lucky for me that Call the Midwife is available on Netflix. However, some of the other ones that we've been talking about that have great knitwear like Home Fires or All Creatures Great and Small are behind a block for me. I can't really access them unless I use the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. If you haven't heard of a VPN before, a VPN stands for a virtual private network. This virtual private network keeps your identity safe 
safe online by encrypting all of the information sent between your device and the internet. And it keeps your personal data protected. And one of the ways that it does that is you can actually change virtually where you are located so that the internet thinks that you are in a different place than where you are today, which is very helpful for unblocking geo-locked data. So for example, if you are a fan of The Office, then you'll know that in January of last year, they removed that from the Netflix here. However, if you use Surfshark VPN to relocate yourself to Sweden or the United Kingdom, then you can still access The Office with your regular Netflix subscription. Or if you're like me and you enjoy a lot of shows on the BBC or on All Five or My Five, I think that's where all creatures great and small are shown, you can place yourself through the VPN into the United Kingdom and watch your shows that way. What really attracted me to Surfshark VPN is that it is easy to use in several different iterations. You can install it on your desktop and have it as an app there. You can just have it as a browser extension, which is the one that I chose because I'm mostly at my computer when I'm wanting to use my VPN and it's just really easy to change over where I am and turn on my VPN by using that little Chrome extension in the corner. If you find that you are wanting to also protect your mobile device when you're browsing the internet, then you also can use the Android or iOS app to use Surfshark on there. If you want to secure your privacy with Surfshark VPN and unlock some geo-locked content, feel free to either scan the QR code right here or click the link in the description, making sure to use my personal promotional code, which is enits, for an extra three months free. Thank you again so much to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video and making it possible again for me to make videos like this. And let's get back to some more called the midwife knits. The next grouping of sweaters I want to talk about are lace sweaters. So lacy sweaters are really popular around this time and you can really see it in some of the different shots. So you have one shot which shows the clinic. So you can see a lot of different people in these shots and there's multiple people that are wearing lacy cardigans or lacy sweaters. So the main person you can see when she stands up, she's wearing a really cute lacy cardigan. I have an inkling that that's machine made and not hand knit from like the way the buttons are and some of the details of how it's knit but when she walks out of frame there's some people who are gossiping very unkindly behind her and I'm pretty sure that that is a hand knit sweater or cardigan that she's wearing in that lacy detail and then even in the background of another shot you can see like a lacy long cardigan that's being worn so it's it's a very popular style at the time and there are two sweaters that we get to see in a little bit more up close detail that are lacy and I, I love lacy and we're still in winter but when it comes to spring and summertime, it's nice to have some of those like lighter, lacier knits to wear. So the first one I want to talk about is this blue one. And it has kind of that uh, very typical, in my mind, 1950s sweater construction, 1960s maybe. So the 1940s, this is a 1940s pattern. You can see that the shoulders are poofier. I do have a shoulder pad in here, but I made it pretty small. Some of the original 1940s patterns, you can really see the shoulders jut out or they jut up. There's a lot of volume in the shoulders. In the 1950s, the shoulders tend to be a little bit smoother and closer to the arms. And you can really see that in that sweater construction. And then the thing that is really the interesting detail, in my opinion, on the sweater is the lace pattern. So you have the lace patterns kind of going in columns down the front. I wasn't able to find this exact pattern, but I could find a few that kind of make me think of this one. So it's a very typical style, I think, for around this time frame for vintage sweaters. It's lightweight, it's kind of like a classic. Last time we talked about like the simple classic sweaters that are just plain knit that classic 1950s construction. This one takes it up a notch by adding that lacy design. And it's also, it's not only nicer to wear in my opinion, like it adds that a little bit extra to whatever you're wearing, but it's fun to knit. So you still have uh, four pieces that you're knitting, the two sleeves front and back. So the sleeves, depending on the design, some of them have lace, some of them don't. The back are all plain as usual, but then you get a little interest in the front by adding that lacy design. So that's fun. The other one that stands out to me, and I love this character's knits. We're gonna talk about hers in a little bit more detail, but we'll start with the lace one. She 
wears this really cute lace jumper. It has a little bit more of a rounded neckline and it looks to me like a crocheted border and a contrast color at the top. Again, I couldn't find this exact pattern, but I found something that kind of reminded me of it where you have that more rounded neckline, lighter construction, like a little bit lacier, and then a contrast color um, I'm pretty sure crocheted neckline to it. The yarn also stood out to me. It looks like a very tweedy yarn and tweed is usually when you have one color of yarn and then as it's being spun you put in different colored neps and that's like the little dusty particles. That's what neps are. So that's the little do uh, dots that you see in the yarn that are that contrasting color. So it has like, I love that shade of green. I love tweeted yarn. You add to it that it's lacy, has a rounded neckline. Like it just has so many wonderful details to it and usually um, what I've always been told or what I learned is that if you're working with a yarn that has a lot of interest in it, it's got speckles or ombre, sometimes tweedy yarns, like sometimes your the flex specks or neps that are in the yarn can be a pretty close shade in the tweed, so it's not so distracting, but when you have a very contrasting color of your neps and your tweeded yarns, you wanna keep the pattern simple or else you lose the stitch definition. So if you spend all the time making a lace and it doesn't even show up because your yarn is too busy, then that doesn't really make sense. But the way that this particular sweater was constructed, how it was made and how it came together, you could appreciate both the lace pattern and that detail in the yarn. Yarn. So that was really cool to me. I, I like that sweater a lot. So this next section is going to be talking more about two more of her sweaters because I, I want to copy her, her wardrobe. I love them so much. She even has a blouse that she wears earlier on that I really like, but we're here to talk about the knits. So the next one is this kind of stripey sweater, but it has more interesting details than just the stripes on it. It's like this really cute pastel shades, but what differentiates it is that the ribbing at the bottom, usually the ribbing of sweaters is just knit one purl one or knit two purl two, but this looks like it is cables. So it's just very small cables at the bottom, which adds visual interest. Like usually, like I say, like her knits are very, they have a lot of different elements of interest to them, which usually you only see one of in one sweater, but she combines all of them and it somehow works, like it's fun together. So you have that uh, like cabled ribbing at the bottom. Then you have the color work in the middle and there are a lot of patterns from the 40s that have stripes. They were meant to be like make do and men's sweaters when you have bits of different colors. And you know, there's the, um, I think the rainbow jumper. I've made one, Retro Claude has made one. Uh, it's one of the more popular vintage knitting patterns. It's done with a slip stitch for the color work. It's a really fun one to work. I would recommend making that one too. It, I do really enjoy making that one, but it's it doesn't look quite like that. It has, I think it's more of a fair aisle because the colors do blend into each other, but the, it doesn't look like a slip stitch pattern to my brief view of what's going on. And then it even has a third detail. From what I can tell, this is, I'm trying to kind of look closely here. It has a pearl neckline. So there's like a neckline, but it's got pearl accents on it. And this is also something that you could see in vintage patterns in the 1950s. There are patterns out there that have that rounded neckline with a pearl accent at the top. So yeah, you combine so many different elements in a sweater. The, the colorful stripes, the cabled ribbing at the bottom, the pearls at the neckline. We have a little bit of like a flare out at the bottom of the sleeves. And it's just, Usually that would be way too busy in my mind, but when you see it in this sweater, it just comes together perfectly. And then the last sweater, and I think this is gonna go on my to make list, is, it's so beautiful. So I first fell in love with this kind of sweater design when I saw Claude's video on her 1940s lacy jumper. And I, I love lacy jumpers, but what always stood out to me about that one is the color work at the neckline. I don't know why, but I just, I love that. That bit of the design is so wonderful to me. Add on to it that the one in Call the Midwife is this like lovely deep yellow, like egg yolk yellow. Like when you get like the farm fresh raised eggs yellow, you know, with that accent at the top. And guess what? I'm pretty sure, I'm like 90% sure I found the exact pattern that this sweater was knit from. There have been other posts online for other sweaters that people have found the original vintage patterns that the sweater was created after. I don't know if anyone has, like I tried to look, 
but the information is really scattered. I don't know if anyone's made the connection between these two yet. So I'm gonna put it out there and you can let me know what your opinion is if this is the sweater that they made this one after. Um, it's an earlier pattern, so the sleeves are poofy like this and the one in the show, the sleeves are like smooth. So maybe they made a change or alteration in the pattern or they just didn't really add any um, shoulder pads to like keep the volume away but even if I didn't have shoulder pads like you would have wrinkling you know so I feel like they altered it a little bit to have that smoother line in the shoulders to make it a little bit more relevant for the time frame of the show rather than the 1940s but yeah just the color work at the neckline and the color work at the sleeve tops ah oh, just a dream in my opinion 100% going on my to make list and by the way all these patterns that I'm kind of popping up on the screen, I don't own any of them, I just found them online, so I will link them down below if you want to take a look for yourself and see what you think, or maybe knit them up too. <laughs> Wouldn't it be really fun? I've had this idea, I have, a, I have a lot of ideas, and just not enough time and not enough arms to make a Call the Midwife inspired knitting book, you know? Pick some of my favorite patterns, or all of our favorite patterns, and grade them, scale them, and put them together for all of us to knit from. But how do you secure the rights for that? And I feel like that's a, a whole nother topic of discussion, but it would be a dream. This next one is a quick one, and I think it was meant to be a little bit more of like a funny moment, a laughing moment, a moment of like maybe shock a little bit. And that is, they're having like a mother craft class or a relaxation class, and they pull out some of the supplies, and I think it's like a cute knitted hat or something but it's an anatomically correct uterus <laughs> with a baby in it, which is definitely unexpected. But I mean, there are still a lot of patterns out there today for anatomically correct things. We have an anatomically correct heart, and I've even seen an anatomically correct skeleton, like a life-size human skeleton, which is wild. So I guess there is still an interest for that, at least <laughs> enough that some people have made some more of these anatomically correct patterns. <laughs> Later on the season, we see Timothy wearing a ski sweater is what I would call. If you have been following me uh, since last December, I actually do a Craftmas series. In this last Craftmas series, I created an entire ski outfit based on one vintage ski sweater I was able to acquire. And it had like a contrast yoke to the rest of the body with these some people call them snowflakes, some people call them the Selbu Rose. It's kind of a Scandinavian knitting pattern that kind of looks like a snowflake in the middle. And Timothy's wearing a very similar sweater in this season. I love it. It looks like the construction of it looks almost exactly like the vintage one that I own. When I saw it, I was like, wow, that is so, so similar to my own. Like the thickness of the yarn, uh, where the seams come together, the folded over turtleneck, and then of course that contrast yoke to the rest the body with the snowflakes across the top. It's just very reminiscent of my own and really made me smile when I saw it. This next pattern is a, a little bit more of a simple pattern, but I think it's a really impactful one because it is a scarf that Jenny wears as she leaves the show. So season three, spoilers if you haven't watched it, Jenny is no longer on the show and she ends up going to a different career path and she has around her neck this blue scarf. I'm pretty sure based on the stitch that it's crocheted. I think I crocheted something really, really similar in the past, although I can't remember it. Someone even posted on Reddit asking about this scarf in particular and what stitch it was. And unfortunately, no one answered. So that's been an unanswered question for three years. If you know what stitch that is, let me know. Maybe we can answer the Reddit post together just a few years after the person was hoping to make it. This scarf is special, right? So it's special in multiple ways. Jenny Lee wears it on her like farewell and it's, I don't know, it's, it's very sweet to see it on her. But if you continue watching Call the Midwife, you'll see it on different characters throughout the seasons. And that definitely popped up to me before in the past. And it makes me wonder like, is it the same scarf that Jenny sent back or whoever made it, maybe they made a few of them. So there's like a matching set that different people wear at different times. And I think that's like a very sweet notion to make a few different scars and gift them to your friends. And then you can kind of have that connection through that knitwear or I guess crochet wear that you've made. So that's a fun one. It's a very sweet one. I think it's a very like heartwarming one. Now I always try to save my favorite for last and this time what I've saved for last is a tea cozy. <laughs> 
something I've seen commented on my last two videos has been, have been people wondering about the tea cozies and trust me, I've been trying to keep an eye out. And in the earlier seasons, there are tea cozies, but they tend to be the fabric kind. And I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, this season is the first time we see a Fibercraft made one. It shows up briefly in an episode and you can kind of see it. I have taken some time to see if I could find a pattern that looks kind of like it. I even found an entire thread of people online who were trying to figure out exactly how this tea cozy was made. And unfortunately, I don't think I ever got a solid answer, but I think we get kind of close. So. I'm not sure if it's knitted or crocheted. I lean towards knitting, although it could also be crocheting. The people in the discussion lean towards knitting as well. Again, though, maybe it's easier to make this design by crocheting. Let me know what you think. Some people thought that the outer pattern was the cat's eye pattern, but I don't, like it has that nice big hole that you see, but it doesn't kind of have those crossbars. So other people were thinking that might be broomstick lace, and I think that comes closer to it, but I still need to look into if there's some like crochet stitches that look kind of like knitted broomstick lace and I think it's two layers a lot of tea cozies are an inner layer and an outer layer so my guess is it's like an inner layer that has that darker blue color and then the outer lighter blue layer with a big open work lace that has like those legs a part of it that broomstick kind of like lace so that the under layer pokes through and you can kind of see that design. It's scrunched together at the top and then has those long pom-poms hanging down. It's super cute. I love it. And I got very excited when I saw the classic <laughs> knitted or crocheted tea cozy for the first time this season. I think it's such a staple of the show going forward that I'm surprised it took me this long to see one for the first time. Anyway, that was taking a closer look at the knits and crochets in season three of Call the Midwife. If you're still enjoying this series, please do let me know and feel free to subscribe because I'll, if you like it, I will continue doing it every month from now until next year, I guess, because there's 13 seasons. <laughs> I always really love doing this. It's, it's such a good time and I have heard your feedback. I know there are other shows that we can do. So far, I think doing one of these a month is okay, but if you want and if you like like it let me know because I can also do like all creatures great and small or home fires as well it would just mean that I have like one less crafty potential video every month just how the balance of things works out in any case thank you all again so so much for watching and for Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video remember to check out the link in description if you are interested and use my code enits for an extra three months for free and I will see you again very very soon bye <laughs>